in the name of Jesus. God was talking, but I wasn't listening Then the flame sparked my heart Ignited the love in me Corazón, corazón You touch my heart, corazón You touch my heart, corazón Welcome to New Hope for Today. I'm so glad to be able to come into your home to minister the Word of God to you. I know that the Word of God is going to bless you because the Word of God says that in the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, and the Word is God. There's power in the Word to save, heal, deliver, but it also blesses our life. And I know that today you are going to be blessed by the Word of God. May God praise God. I want you to go with me this morning to the book of Hebrews. Hallelujah. The book of Hebrews, chapter 11, and we're going to go to verse 27. Because faith, now I want you to hear what I want to say to you. Faith is most needed now more than ever. People have got to learn to walk with God by faith today more than ever. Not just say they know the scriptures of faith. Not just say that, that, that you know, uh, I, I believe there's a God. No, no, no. But do you know this God by faith? Amen. Amen. In a relationship. Amen. That's what's important. Are you with me? You, you and I must, must know him. Amen. In a relationship like we've never had before. He, he is the ultimate Above everything in life, this God that you and I serve. Praise the mighty name of the Lord. And I like what I like what the Word of God says, because you know we 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 we're going to face difficulties. We're going to face whatever comes, but we must know in whom we believe. We must have our faith established. Are you with me? It must be settled. I know a lot of people, the minute things start falling apart, they waver in their faith. And and a lot of them stop wanting to believe that God is even with them or that God loves them or that God even cares about them. But let me tell you something. Faith is not, listen to me, Faith is not established by what you think. Faith is established by the existence of a living God that created the heavens and the earth and everything that exists. He'll never stop being who he is whether you want to believe in him or not. He is God. Are you with me, church? He is God. Now, the second thing I want to say to, to you this morning is you need, to, you need to say this to yourself. This is so important. You need to say this to yourself. Okay? Look, look, look at me over here. God is in control. Not me. 
And you know that there's people that think God's got to move for them in every way they think. And if he doesn't, they stop believing in him. Well, I want to say something to you. They never believed in him from the beginning. They, they never had that experience in their life that they needed to have. You see, when you have that, that personal experience in your life, I don't care what comes up. I don't care what happens. Amen. I don't care. Listen to me. What teaching comes up or what? Listen to me. Nothing can take away the reality of that God that you met. Oh, if you're going to give him praise, you better give him praise. He is, he is above everything in life. He's above all there is. And I, I, want, I, want, I want to tell you, I thank God for it. Are you with me? I thank the Lord for it. So look at this. In verse 27, chapter 11, verse 27, I want us to go there because this is so very important. I want to say a few things to you that I pray will help you to really understand he has your back, but listen to me. But you got to let God be God in your life. Let him do the one, be the one that directs your life. Are you with me, church? Anybody home? You know, I've heard a lot of people say, man, I was in the bar last night, me and God. God was with me there. No, 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 no. Come on, come on. Are you here with me this morning? Come on, that's that. You know, you 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 tell me you took God to a bar, and that God sat right there with you and drank, drank your your silly drinks. No, no, no. Listen to me. We're talking about a holy God. We're we're talking about the Creator of heaven and earth, brother. We're not talking about about anything else. We're talking about the real God. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. He's the real God. Yes. So look at this. Motivated by faith, he left Egypt behind him, being un unawed and undismayed by the wrath of the king. Imagine, the king was crazy. He was a crazy man. Just like we have today in, in our world. All this is going crazy, brother. Are you with me? L look, listen to me. But, but yet, that did not move Moses. Moses did not stop believing in God because Pharaoh was messed up. Hello. Praise God. He kept going. You need, to, you need to see that this is powerful. This is very powerful. Look what it says. For he never flinched, but held staunchly to his purpose. He held on to what God called him for. Say it would be, God called me. And my first, my first purpose, say it with me, everybody, my first purpose is to serve him. I must serve the Lord. You know, the, 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 the craziest thing, listen to me, and I'm not trying to put people down or anything like this, but I want you to understand something. I want you to know who, who this God really is. I've seen people out there, man, Smoking their doobies, trying to witness for the Lord? No, man. Come on. Come on. We, we, or go, go to the bar and, and sit there and drink and, and try to convince somebody to give their hearts to Jesus? Is there anybody here? It, it doesn't work that way. Uh, I mean, brother, listen to me. You got to know who he is. Yes. Who he is and, and, and who you 
need to believe in and why and who he represents. He's a mighty God. He's almighty. Amen? So look at this. To his purpose and endued steadfastly as one who gazed on him who is invisible. Now here's Moses. Here's Moses. And he's, he's got his eyes fixed on, on this God who was invisible. How did he see him? How do you see God? How, how do you see him in, in this 20th century we're living in, 2024? I think it's 24, right? How do you see God? Well, first of all, you got to have that experience, that born again experience. You 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 got to you got to have that born again experience. That that he can, listen to me. You can't get that nowhere else except by him. You got to have that. That experience in itself causes you to think the way the Word of God thinks. The way the Word of God speaks. Amen. I was, we we're talking back there, Brother Donnie and myself and Pastor Ed and all of us, uh, uh, about the Word. And, and, and listen, listen to me. The Word of God is infallible. It has no error. It, it is not, listen to me, it is not man-made. It is a spiritual book that was written, listen to me, it was written by men directed by the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit was the pen that wrote the Bible. Oh, you better give him praise. Now, now imagine the Bible has been the only book in the world that has not been able to be put out of commission. Every other book that you find or see, I mean, you know, you throw, it in the, you throw it on your shelf and you leave it there, you forget about it. But the Bible is the only book that people never just forget about. They always have it, even in your, your cell phone, your, your iPad, your, your, your book form, whatever. You got the Bible with you all the time and you go through it, you look at it. Am I right or wrong? Okay, you look at that, at, that, at, that, at that Bible all the time. Okay, it's the only book they've never been able to get rid of in the whole world. Now look at this. It's the only book that's been the number one seller from the very beginning of time all the way to now, the number one seller in the world. What a powerful book. So, so imagine you and I have, you and I have a, a, a born again experience where he, he, he reveals himself to you through that experience. Okay, so, so why, why does he give you that born again experience? Listen to me. In the Old Testament, in the Old Testament, they, they could see God, listen to me, in the cloud by, by day and the fire by night. Amen. I mean, that thing was bigger than the, than, the, than the whole city of Denver. It was covering over two million people. Two to three million was covering to keep them warm, to keep the sun from burning them up. And, and, and that was God. And, the, and then they could hear his voice thundering when Moses was up there. They could hear his voice. They had a lot of experiences with the Lord. Are you with me, church? But listen to me. Listen to me. How powerful are these experiences to you? How powerful? And the reason I ask that is because, listen, a short time later, they were melting all their gold to make a false image. They were turning towards the enemy now. 
And, and, and you know why I say that? Look at, look at me over here. Look at me. Because Christians are no different than the children of Israel were in the, in the desert. You know, one minute we're on fire. Ah, man, my God, he's everything. Whoa, yeah. And the next minute, man, I don't know if I want to serve the Lord. And I'm, I'm thinking to myself, wow, what a trip. Like they say in Spanish, is that un viaje? That's a trip, bro. To, to, to have that kind of a mentality, you switch on and off. That's not good. Say it with me, that's not good. He, he comes into your life, listen to me, he comes into your life, and he comes in there because he wants to build your life to be steadfast. To be, oh, you're not hearing me. Not, listen, unmovable. Is there anybody here with me tonight? Amen. Are you with me, church? Go, go with me. Go with me. Are you here? I want you to go with me to Psalms. I think it's Psalms 91 or 92. I think it's 92. Let's go there for a minute. And I think it's verse 14. Look at this. Go to verse, yeah, verse uh, 14. Growing in grace, they shall still bring forth fruit in old age. Go to 13. No, go to verse 12. All right. The uncompromisingly, now look at me. Moses would not compromise. People, listen, listen to me. There are going to be people that won't like you because you won't compromise with what you believe. I go through that. I go through that. Even family members ain't going to like you because you stand firm with what you believe. Anybody here? And, and if you're a, a wishy-washy Christian... Look at me. You're, you're going to fold. You're going to give up. You're going you're gonna to fold and start going their way. But the danger of that is that you'll lose your soul. Anybody here with me, church? You, you, got, to, you got to know. You got to know. All right? So look at this. The uncompromisingly righteous shall flourish... Like the palm tree. Like the palm tree. Mira, that tree, you can bend it any way you want to. You're not going to break it. It goes through storms, through hail, through, through fires. It goes through all kinds of things. And that tree stays standing. And you won't break it for nothing. That tree is there. And, and the, after the storm is over, it's standing up straight. This is why God, listen, this is why God uses the palm tree as an illustration for you and I to understand that our relationship with God must be strong. You must, your faith in God, listen to me, your faith in God. When people waver and off and on and off and on, their faith ain't real. It, it, it can't be. You, it's got to be, you got to have a steadfast faith. You got to be real, you got to be strong. Say it with me, I got to be strong in the Lord. Okay, so look at this. The uncompromisingly righteous shall flourish like the palm tree, be, be long lived, long lived, stately, upright, useful, and fruitful. Oh, praise God. I said, praise God. How, how do you become like, listen, what kind of, a, a, of an encounter have you had with God? And listen to me, that was just the first encounter. But what about 
other encounters. Have you had other encounters with God? Has God made himself real to you in the other ways? Oh, Jesus, help me, Lord. Anybody home? I said, is there anybody home with me? I, I'm trying to help you. I'm trying to help you. I'm trying to help you become strong in the Lord so that nothing can move you, no matter what. No matter what, the, what it looks like out there. No matter how, much, how many protests they are and how ugly they are towards Christians and, and, and Jews and everything else. It doesn't matter, church. Listen to me. What matters is how, how are you connected to God? How is your relationship with the Lord? That's what's important. You can believe, I mean, people believe all kinds of strange stuff, crazy things. But there's only one, only one that can guarantee your entrance. Jesus! Look at it. Let me finish reading this. And then we're going to go to that, to that verse. Look what it says. They shall grow like a cedar in Lebanon, majestic, stable, durable, and incorruptible. He's talking about the born-again believer. He's talking about the person that has a relationship with God. I said that has a relationship with God. Do you know, do you know there are people in the church here? And all, every church out there, look at me. They go, they go to church on Sunday. They think they're going to make it to heaven just because they went to church. Listen to me. Do you know him? Do you have a spiritual relationship with Jesus? Look, listen to me. Look at me. They go out into the hallway, and then they start inviting each other to the bar or, or, or different places to do wrong. Everybody here, say this with me. What I let pastor. <laughs> How many of you? I never hear it. I never hear it. I'm telling you the truth. I may be wrong, but I never hear everybody else say, "Hey, I'll see you tonight in church." See that? No, no, no. They never, never say that. But they do invite each other to other things. All right. Okay, look at this. Verse 13. Planted in the house of the Lord, they shall flourish in the courts of our God. All of this, all of this takes faith. Faith in God. Listen to me. The more you know Him, the closer you get to Him, the more your faith grows, the more you believe. Oh, praise God. Is there anybody with me here? But, 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 but the further you get from him, the harder it is for you to believe. That's the truth. Anybody here? I said, anybody here? I was sitting at home not too long ago knowing that I've been going through all this stuff. And I started kind of doubting. And then it hit me. This lying devil. I jumped up. I jumped up from my couch. And I said, no way. He is in my sight. He is with me. Oh, you better give him praise. He's a powerful God. So look at this. Look at this. Because a lot of people think they can, they can live any way and do all kinds of stuff and, and make it. But listen to me. There's only one way, church. And I'm not trying to tell you, if you don't do it my way, you're never going to go to heaven. No, I'm telling you that unless you're born again 
and have that encounter with God and follow Him. Are you with me? If you get that relationship with the Lord, draw close to Him. Don't draw far from Him. Draw close to Him. You'll, you'll hear Him. He'll speak to you. He'll, 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 he'll work in your life. He'll, he'll deal with you. So, so look at this. Go, go with me. Go with me. Uh, look, look at, we're going to go to John chapter 14, and we're going to read verse 6. Look what he says. John 14, 6. What a powerful God. Look what he says. And Jesus said to him, he said, he's talking to Thomas. He's talking to doubting Thomas. Do you, do you really believe that? Do you think Pastor only knows the truth and nobody else? And I've heard all kinds of crazy stuff. No, I don't believe that. But I have the truth. I don't believe I'm the only one, but I do have the truth. And look what it says. And Jesus said to him, I am the way. And the truth. And the life. And no one comes to the Father except by me or through me. No one can get to the Father. Hello. I've heard, I've heard pastors say to, to some people, well, brother, I'm not saying you're going to go to hell because you just drink one or you, or you just take a couple of talks. Well, I'm not saying you're going to go to hell. Tell him the truth. I, I tell the preacher later, I said, what are you telling that man? Tell him the truth. You are going to miss it. You, are, you know why I tell him that? Because you can't take one talk without taking another one and another one. No. And you can't take one drink without wanting another one and another one. And another. Come on. You might, I used to be a drinker. I used to be a drug addict. Come on. I know, what I'm, I know what I'm telling you. And I tell these guys, what are you telling these people? Be honest. Be truthful. If, if you're going to say anything, say the truth. Amen. If they hate you for it, that's up to them. But tell the truth. Praise God. Oh, Jesus. Look at this. Look at this. And Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. And no one comes to the Father except through me. And look at this. He had, you know who was asking him that? Doubting Thomas. He wanted to. He wanted to find a, another way in. You mean you're the only way? Well, isn't there another way in? Just like we're, we're hearing today that every, I heard it the other day that every, every religion is, is the same. They're all going into heaven. They might believe differently a little bit here and there, but they're all going to heaven. I said, no, no, no. Then listen to me. Then, then what they're saying to you and I is this is that the Word of God is not infallible. How many know what the word infallible means? No, no error. It is, what it, it is what it says. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Is, are you with me, church? Anybody here with me today? How many, how many don't like what I'm saying? <laughs> Go with me to 2 Corinthians. Chapter 3. Verse 18. And all of us, as with unveiled face, because we continue to behold in the word of God, 
as in a mirror the glory of the Lord. As in a mirror the glory of the Lord. Are constantly being transfigured or transformed into his very own image in every increasing splendor and from one degree of glory to another. For this comes from the Lord who is the Spirit. Is anybody reading that? Anybody hope? Praise God. Oh, Lord, help me, Jesus. They're looking at me kind of funny, Lord. Go, go with me. Imagine to the book of Exodus, chapter 24, verse 10. We're going to read verse 10 and 11. Now, I want you to hear what I'm going to say to you. Look at me. God wants to reveal himself more and more to you and I than he has ever revealed to you and I before. Oh, you better give him praise. He wants to show you who he really is. The problem is this. Do you want to draw close to him? Do, do you want to draw close to him? You can keep believing the way you're believing and, and miss it. Look what it says. And they saw the God of Israel that is a convincing manifestation of his presence. This was Israel, Israelite, the Israelites in the desert. They saw a manifestation of his presence, just like you and I have seen a manifestation of his presence. Every time you come to church, you see a manifestation of his presence when you see somebody here speaking in other tongues. You're seeing a manifestation yeah. of his presence. Yeah. Oh, you better give him praise. See, and, and you, you got to ask yourself, how come the devil worked so hard to try and stop people from speaking in tongues? Well, one thing, one reason is he doesn't want you to see a manifestation of the Spirit because then you're left without, listen to me, you're left without an excuse. Uh, listen, when you know that's the Holy Spirit and, and you try to deny him, you're in trouble. So, so they try to say, don't, don't speak in tongues because you're going to scare people. That's not true. If they weren't afraid to get loaded and, 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 and go to the hospital from their drug addiction, from their overdoses, and all that. The spirit ain't going to scare them. Oh, you're going to scare them if you speak in tongues. That's not true. That's, that's a lie. Don't you know who's telling you that lie? Don't you understand that's not true? If you weren't afraid to go to jail and to prison and, and get loaded and, and fall out of a car and, and stick your head out of some of you women, sticking your head out of a car, vomiting all over, cussing at everybody, and, everything, and, 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 and you were using the devil's tongues. You think the Holy Ghost is going to scare you? That's not true. Are you with me? Oh, brother. Come on. 
you you know I'm telling the truth. I'm not going to sit here and, and try to babysit this thing so you'll like, like me and love me. I don't care if you don't to do. I, I'm going to tell you the truth. Come on, give him praise. Hallelujah. My God. I need it. Listen to me. When I went into that little church in 1973, I went into that little church, man, to look for God. They were all speaking in tongues, dancing in the spirit. Brother, that didn't scare me. I had been doing crazier things than that. And that night I found Jesus. Or I want to say it this way. Jesus found me because I was so messed up. <laughs> Look at this. And they saw the, the God of Israel that is a convincing manifestation of his presence. And under his feet it was like Pavement of bright sapphire stone. Like the very heavens in clearness. Imagine. They saw this. Wow. Wow. Now, now look at verse 11. And upon the nobles of the Israelites... He laid not his hand to conceal himself from them, to rebuke their, their, their daring or to harm them. But they saw the manifestation. Look at this. They saw the manifestation of the presence of God and ate and drank. They saw. Praise the Lord. I'm glad you're here, Hito. Love you. I do love you. I want you to know that. I've always loved you. Amen. You've been special to me. How, how many understand that? That God... Uh, are you with me, church? I said, are you with me? I, I mean, brother, you, you, you don't, don't ever tell me you're afraid, man. Look at verse 16. The glory of the Lord rested on Mount Sinai and the cloud covered it for six days. On the seventh day, God called to Moses out of the midst of the cloud. They heard the voice of God. Moses, come on up here, Moses. Three million people. Wow. And they see Moses going up. Wow. Is that what your Bible says? Or am I am I am I dreaming this? Am I making this up? Wow. And look, look at me. Well, go, go with me. Go with me. Go with me to Isaiah chapter 6. Oh, Jesus. Some of us can't see too far ahead because we have something in the way. I thought you were uh, my friend. I'm going to tell you, you got a girlfriend in the way. Don't let you see any further. <laughs> uh, is there anybody here? We have obstacles. Some of us have people that won't let us go forward. 
won't let us believe how we're supposed to believe because we're afraid that if we do believe the right way, we're going to lose them. And what you don't understand, you've already lost them. Oh, you're going to give him praise? Give him a real praise. They, they won't believe. They won't believe and they don't want you to believe. Brother, when I came to the Lord, I had everybody in town talking about me. They called me a santucho. They called me every name you can think of. They used to say, now he thinks he's holy. I wasn't thinking anything, man. All I knew was that I needed God. Praise the Lord. Yeah, give him a big praise. And, and, and man, I, I had to tell myself, wow, man, what's happening with all this? I didn't do anything to anybody. I just gave my heart to Christ. And all of a sudden, because listen to me, the devil does not want you to serve the Lord the way you're supposed to. He wants you to pretend to be saved while you live for him. Are you here this morning? So look what it look what it says here. In the year that King Uzziah died, that who was King Uzziah was was Isaiah's relative. Okay, they were relatives. And and King Uzziah, amen, was blinding the eyesight of Isaiah. Isaiah was a prophet. He didn't know that yet because he couldn't see any further than, than King Uzziah. Are you with me? So here, here, listen to me. I'm telling you the truth. Don't let no one blind you from who God is and what God wants to do in your life. <laughs> Praise God. Isaiah was blinded by King Uzziah. Look at what it says. In the year that King Uzziah died, in a vision, I saw the Lord. This is Isaiah talking. He hadn't seen anything till he died. Till he was taken out of the way. Oh wow! Look at you, man. You're you're you're, you're so kind. You know you know what you know what. I'll, I'll change the subject a little bit just to give you a little humor. You know what I you know what you know what 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 gets me in in our day and age. Uh, most of us elderly people, when we grew up as kids, we all had dogs, but we didn't treat them like they were human. shine their nails and brush their teeth and buy them special food and put it in the refrigerator. It's like a, a guy, a guy, a couple of guys I knew in New Mexico. They they went in drunk one night one night from from they were out there in the in the world party and they went in so drunk and they went to the refrigerator and they opened like that and there was some meat in the refrigerator. And they got it, and they started making sandwiches, and they ate it. They they ate it all, and 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 the next day he asked her, "Mom, do you have any more of that meat?" Oh, she said, "You mean the dog food?" Ah, <laughs> oh, Lord, help me, Jesus. 
The girls got a dog. They got a dog here. Edmund gave them a dog, a beautiful dog. And, uh, and they're thinking, man, they were babysitting that dog and cleaning him in the back. And, and all kinds of, I said, what the heck? I, said, I, I called them over to where I was at, and I said, listen, that's a dog. It's not a human being. Uh, I'm not telling you to mistreat your dog or anything like that, but, but man, my God, but you can go overboard. Huh? Thank you, Jesus. Come on. Say, Pastor, tell me the truth. Amen. So look at this. In the year that King Uzziah died, in a vision I saw the Lord. Hallelujah. When, 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 when some, of us, some of us need to let our dreams die so God can give us a new dream and give us a new way so you can see God move the way he wants to move. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. That didn't sound like a very good amen, sister. Praise the Lord. Look at verse 2. Above him stood the seraphim. Each had six wings. With two each covered his own face. And with two each covered his feet. And with two each flew. Now imagine some. Look what God, God is showing him all this. He could see it before. He, he couldn't see the blessing. He couldn't see what God wanted to do. How many know God wants to do great things for you? How many believe God wants to move mightily for you? This, this last hour, God wants to move mightily for you. And we're and we're and we're caught up. We're blinded. Some of us are blinded by certain things. We've allowed certain things to blind our eyesight. Oh, you love God. You love God because you're here because you love God. But but you got to go further than that. You got to let God love you back. You got to let God show you who He is in reality and what He wants to do for you. Are you are you with me, Church? I said, Are you with me? Yeah. Expect to see God's glory. And look at verse three. And one carried to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. Now look at me. Do you know that it wasn't until then that they realized that from the beginning of time, God was trying to reach his people and lift them up and bless them and set them free and, and, and they couldn't see it. There's some of you sitting here, you can't see the powerful things God has in store for you because someone or something is blinding your eyesight. And you can't see it. Anybody here? And you've got, you've got to let God have his way. You've got to say to yourself, I want to know God in a way I've never known him before. I was driving down the highway one time. I was taking this evangelist to go preach. We we're, were traveling about 100 miles. I was taking him to go preach somewhere. And I ran out of gas. Shh, I pulled over the highway like that. Shh. And he looks at me, and he looks at his watch. He knew we, we, got it. we had to be there. And this truck pulled in back of me. The man got off, filled 
my 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 gas tank with gas. Went back to his truck and left. And he looks at me and he says, "Who was that guy?" I says, "I don't know." And he tells me, "Brother, God must really love you, don't he?" Oh, you better give the Lord praise. He, listen to me, he wants to show himself in ways you've never seen before. Are, are you with me, church? I believe, church, through all of this that I'm going through, now, God's going to show us some things we've never seen before. Praise God. Are you with me, church? Look at Acts 2.25. Let's go there real quickly. Acts 2.25. Hallelujah. Acts 2.25. For David says in regard to him, I saw who? The Lord. Constantly. Say it with me. Constantly. Before me. For he is at my right hand that I may not be shaken or overthrown or cast down from, from my rescue and happy state. He says, God is with me. I saw him. I see him. I feel him. Oh, let me tell you, I, I know him. Come on. And his purpose, look at this. That I may not be shaken. That's what happens to a lot of people who really don't get in there with the Lord. They 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 they're shaken. They're they're disturbed. They they right away fear, you know. And uh you know, you can ask yourself, well, Pastor, were you afraid when they told you they were gonna do all this? And 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 uh I'll, I'll tell you the truth. Uh, I didn't know what to feel. Is there anybody here with me, church? Because I don't feel nothing. And they're surprised at that. But I believe that just God showed me. He's with me. Are, are you with me? So, so look what David said. For David says, I saw the Lord. Constantly before me. For he is at my right hand that I may not be shaken or overthrown. Can you imagine? I mean... All kinds of things can come at us. I mean, all kinds of disasters can hit us, as uh, hit our own personal life, or or our families, or or even just as, as a nation. But brother, let me tell you something. We serve a mighty God. We serve a God that is with us. Say it with me. We serve a God that is with us. He'll, he'll never abandon you as long as you don't abandon him. Somebody said to me one day, the, the Lord left me. No, 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 no. Listen to me. The Lord didn't leave you. You left him. He don't, he don't, he don't do that. He's a powerful God. Are you with me today? I want you to bow your head. I don't know if Sister Becky is here. I want him to come. Amen. But I want you to bow your head with me right now, everybody. And I want to ask this very important question. Do you know him? 
as your Lord and your Savior? Do you know Jesus Christ as the one who should be in control of your life? Do you know him in a born-again experience? I want to say this to you. If you don't, if you don't know him, then I want to introduce you to him. Amen. I want to bring you to Jesus. I want you to meet the one who's able to change your life and he's able to bless you and he's able to lift you up. So I want you, if, if you don't know him, I just want you to simply lift your hand. I want to pray for you. I want, I want to pray for you. Anybody here? Because if not, we're going on. Anybody else here? Anybody here that does not know the Lord, just lift your hand. Because if not, we're going on. I'm assuming that you all know him. So if you know him, then you should not let nothing get in your way from allowing him to reveal himself more to you. I want you to stand with me. Everybody stand. Hallelujah. Sing a song. I don't want nobody to leave. To your home today. I know that the word of God blessed you richly. But I want to ask you a question today. Do you know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? If you don't, I want to lead you to him. It's the greatest experience you'll ever have in your whole life. I just want you to pray this prayer with me. If you don't know him today, would you say, Lord Jesus, I confess I am a sinner and I have sinned against you. Would you please forgive me and come into my heart and wash my heart with your blood? I receive you as my Lord and my Savior. Amen. If you have prayed that prayer, would you call us on the phone number on the screen? We want to keep in touch with you. We want to help you continue with your walk with God. Or if you need any help of some sort, would you call us? If we can help you, we want to be there for you. May God bless you till the next time.